There are substances that are either by the tumor itself, the tumor usually produces a higher level of tumor markers or higher results. So it's also used to predict prognosis, uh, again, because um, higher uh, levels of tumor markers mean that you may have a larger tumor. And it's also used to monitor response to therapy. For example, let's say you have a, a pancreatic mass. Let's say you have, you have a pancreatic cancer here. So if you have a, a, a mass in the pancreas, so one of, it, one of the tumor markers is called uh, CA19-9, CA19-9, right, so, all right, before you do surgery, for example, or start treatment, so it is often requested by a baseline level of the tumor marker. So after treatment, let's say the patient underwent surgery, let's say the tumor was removed in the pancreas and the other structures, if it's successful, all right, to expect a decrease in the level of the tumor marker. So that is how tumor markers all right, are used as a monitoring tool for therapy response. So it can also be used to detect possible recurrences. So after operation, to expect the tumor markers to decrease. If in subsequent follow-up, it increases suddenly, then it may mean either the tumor came back Right, or recurred, or the operation was not that good in which you know, a tumor was left and not removed, or maybe the tumor now has metastasized to other organs in such that the tumor is now starting to secrete the same tumor marker before surgery. So previous year tumor marker, so in 1847, Sir Henry Benz Jones actually discovered the, not discovered, detected a protein that can be used for the diagnosis of multiple myeloma. So now it's called bench dose protein. In 1867, Sir Michael Foster proposed the use of urinary amylase in marker for pancreatic cancer, for example. The new modern coronary canal trophy is regarded as the first modern tumor marker, and it's used for the diagnosis of gestational trophoblastic diseases. The further development happened in 1965. Dr. Joseph Gold started to develop a blood test for colon cancer. So this was further improved to CA19-9, the tumor marker we mentioned earlier. It's initially used for colorectal and pancreatic cancer. And other tumor markers were, were um, uh, discovered and made available, like CA19-3 for breast and CA125 for ovarian cancer. So the next slides are not important. These are the um, different methodologies employed in the laboratory to detect these tumor markers. So ELISA, or enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, radioamino assay, or chemiluminescence immunoassay. Okay, so this is the first tumor marker that we are going to discuss. It's called carcinoembryonic antigen, or CEA. So this tumor marker was first described in 1965 by Gold and Friedman. It's actually a glycoprotein of approximately 200,000 molecular weight. It's expressed in normal mucosal cells and overexpressed in adenocarcinoma, especially colorectal carcinoma. So the normal value of carcinoma embryonic antigen it should be about, not about, it should be less than 2.5 nanograms per ml. For non-smokers, you have a higher cutoff for smokers, but definitely levels of more than 10 milligrams per ml is considered significant. So higher levels means that the source of this elevation is most likely something that is malignant. Now CA was originally thought to be specific for digestive tract cancer. However, they discovered that it can also be elevated in many types of malignancies outside of the GI tract and even some non-malignant conditions. For example, so CA can also be elevated in tumors coming from the breast, lung, gastric, pancreas, bladder, uh, thyroid medullary carcinoma, liver, lymphomas, and even melanomas. Even benign conditions can also cause elevations, but not as high as malignant tumors, but it can cause elevations. So simple cigarette smoking, peptic ulcer disease, um, IBD, 
uh, like your Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, pancreatitis, hypothyroidism, liver cirrhosis, and even biliary obstruction. So um, now that we mentioned that it's, it may be not specific for a certain tumor, what is its clinical significance? So after 30 years, it is now well understood that CA is elevated in some solid tumors. So less than 25% of patients with disease confined to the colon have elevated CA. So what this means is not all patients with colon cancer will have elevated carcinoid embryonic antigen levels, limiting its use as a screening tool. It is elevated in only 40% of patients, even with distant metastasis. So therefore, it's typically not suggested as a screening test. However, it may be useful for detecting recurrences. So following successful therapy, elevations may fall. So the high level of CA, if the treatment was successful, the surgery was successful, you expect its levels to decrease. So therefore, sudden increase after the initial decrease may suggest recurrence or the reappearance of the tumor. It is even, it may not be even seen in about 30% of patients with metastatic diseases. So it's not 100% in terms of its ability to detect uh, malignancies. So there's even um, features of the differentiation of tumors that may affect uh, the expected increase in CA, for example. It's only the well-differentiated tumors that will usually cause an elevation of CA. Whereas, for, whereas those poorly differentiated and undifferentiated tumors may produce little. So the American Cancer Society even concluded that CA cannot be used as a screening tool, but it is more useful in the preoperative assessment, staging, and surgical treatment planning. So they recommend monitoring CA levels every two to three months for at least two years in patients with stage two or stage three disease after treatment um, was started or was finished. Okay, so the next tumor marker is called CA19-9. So this was first developed as a marker to detect colon cancer, colorectal cancer. However, it is now considered the best tumor marker for patients with cancer involving the pancreas and biliary tract. However, not all pancreatic tumors can cause elevations of this marker. It is said to be not elevated in islet cell carcinomas of the pancreas. All right, so the normal cutoffs for CA should be less than 37. A value of more than 1,000 is significant, and most likely, this value is consistent with a malignant disease causing its elevation. Aside from the pancreas, uh, malignancies coming from the colon, esophagus, and the liver can also cause elevations of CA19-9. Benign conditions like pancreatitis, uh, bitter disease, cirrhosis, and even polylithiasis can also cause elevations. And patients with Lewis null blood type, so these patients cannot produce CAA. So what this means is if these patients produce or suffers from, let's say, pancreatic cancer, CA will not be elevated and produced. So the positive predictive value of a level of more than a thousand is almost 97% sure that it is due to a pancreatic malignancy or pancreatic cancer. So the next tumor marker is called alpha beta protein. So it is a major protein of fetal serum but falls to an undetectable level after birth. So this has been used for more than 30 years in screening for hepatocellular carcinoma and in diagnosis and monitoring patients with germ cell tumors. So the normal cutoff value of alpha-fetoprotein, it should be less than 5, 